year so far at State College PA has been average for James Franklin. The head coach, who prior to Penn State, definitely turned Vanderbilt football around, making them relevant and getting them to bowl competition. Now, so far, he's been 14-12 and 12 at PSU. Back-to-back -back seven and six seasons. You have a feeling that's not going to get the job done for this Big Ten power. Now, you've got to do something to revive the offense. That's a big, big thing. Defensively, last year, they weren't too shabby, but offensively, there are problems. Had a hard time protecting the quarterback. And the running game, you know, even though it had uh, Saquon Barkley, who we'll talk about in a second, really it was not one of the best around. So what do you do? Well, they're going to go up tempo. And that's where Joe Moorhead, the former offensive coordinator for a uh, FCS school, comes into play. Moorhead led Fordham to a lot of offensive success. But again, it was up tempo. And a new offensive line coach, too, in uh, Matt Limegrover and it's going to be a different look for Penn State, but with a lot of familiar talent. We'll start with the offensive line because that's right there where the focus is going to be on. As I mentioned earlier, they didn't exactly give Christian Hackenberg, who is a longtime pro-style quarterback for Penn State, now a second-round draft pick for the New York Jets, much time to throw. Otherwise, Hackenberg's numbers really would have looked nice. But we'll see if progression has set in for the Penn State offensive line, especially with the tackles with Paris Palmer back um, at left tackle. He's one of the... Uh, few seniors on that offensive line, and the junior, and Anthony Nelson, who will play the right tackle. Penn State returns five of the six offensive linemen. Biggest key, I think, is going to be moving the chains, and they did not do a good job of that in 2015. It's no wonder they only scored 23 points per game when you can only convert um, on third down, when you can only get, um, you know, 27% success rating on third down conversions. That will not cut the mustard. Well, New quarterback, of course, Hackenberg, as we mentioned, now a New York Jet, so it now becomes Trace McSorley's job as signal caller. Only a sophomore, limited time, of course, in 2015, he only had 40 pass attempts. Backing him up, if anything goes wrong, you've got Tommy Stevens, just a freshman. So are they a little thin at quarterback? Oh, yeah. But not thin as far as running back proven talent. Saquon Barkley, we mentioned that the running game was not one of the best around, but you know, Saquon Barkley did his part and then some, rushing for close to 1,100 yards a year ago. Receiving-wise, there is some talent back with Chris Godwin, who could be first all-team Big Ten. He's a good one with over 1,100 yards receiving. And you have Deshaun Hamilton complimenting him, but no Geno Lewis. Geno Lewis has now uh, moved on. He decided that he did not want to finish his career at Penn State, and now he's with my Sooners. So we'll see if Penn State can turn an offensive round that was 101st in scoring and 105th in total yards. While the Penn State offensive line had their struggles, and that's being kind, the defense was spot on, especially up front. Remember, the Nittany Lions last year, number one in the country in quarterback sacks. And, of course, it helped to have Carl Nassif, who had 15 and a half of those sacks, but he's gone now, along with Austin Johnson, Anthony Zettel, gone too. So you lose at least three precious gems on that defensive line for the Nittany Lions. But you do return Garrett Sickles up front. So the defensive line, we're going to see how they do, because it's going to be, for the most part, a new look. And it's going to be hard to duplicate those stats from a year ago. Penn State last year was also um, 14th in the country, an overall D, and 8th in the nation versus the pass. Now, Good news, the back seven, a lot of them are intact, especially both outside linebackers. Brandon Bell, along uh, with the explosive Jason Cabdenda, he is a monster. He can cover a lot of that field. Inside linebacker returns two in Naeem Warden-White. Secondary, Marcus Allen could very well be an all-10 uh, defensive back. He returns, and Grant Haley at the corner. So, the key to Penn State's defense, obviously, is going to be that defensive front and getting them into the mix because I think that the linebackers and secondary, by the by most part, are going to be advanced, but not so much on the defensive line. They only played three non-conference games. The toughest of the bench might be the one against Pittsburgh on the road, although last year they played Temple, and Temple had their way, winning by 17 points, making a lot of draws drop. But uh, this year the game is at State College. Um, looking at the Big Ten schedule, uh, if you have a season ticket for the Nittany Lions, you're going to be entertained because you've got Iowa, Ohio State, and Michigan State all coming to Beaver Stadium. 
And of course, that stadium holds well over 100,000. So there are some attractive games. Of course, the biggest question is can Penn State compete in those games and pull off an upset? I think Penn State wins just enough. I think they won seven to stay above position to go to a bowl game. But as far as continuing in the Big Ten East, not a chance at all. Just too much tough competition. And the fact that the offense has to replace the QB and the offensive line and defensive lines are going to have to prove that they can get the job done. That's my look at the Nittany Lions. Catch you next time.